I feel a little intimidated today. I am a, not an educator. I am an engineer. Um, but my mom's an educator, so I'll try to channel my inner teacher. I uh, want to start with the punchline. August 5th, 2012, 10.23 Pacific Time. Thanks. They're looking good. This is Coming control up. room in Pasadena. Vehicle reports entry interface. We are beginning to feel the atmosphere uh, as we go in here. Uh, it is reporting that we are seeing G's on the order of uh, 11 to 12 Earth G's. Yes. Megaversal 2 is starting. We are now getting telemetry from Odyssey. Have parachute deploy around Mach 1.7. The parachute is deployed. It's a big deal. We know it's it's the still safe. It's slowing down as it gets Feature closer to the has surface. Separated. We're on the ground. We're down to 90 meters per second at an altitude of 6.5 kilometers descending. Standing by for batch cell separation. We are in powered flight. We're at altitude of one kilometer descending. Standing by for sky green. Sky green is started. Single to us, you remain strong. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Thumbnails or pictures. It means we know it's safe. And you can see a wheel, and that's my hardware. So I get chills every time I watch that movie, and I cry a little bit, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's a huge moment in our lives, and you can tell, like, um, NASA's traditionally very formal and very reserved. Um, and when you see a celebration like that, uh, with that diverse group of people all coming together, um, there's a lot that we can learn from that. And uh, so, you know, first we have this celebration after, after landing, you probably have an adult beverage or two to, you know, celebrate even more. Um, and then we start to reflect, and uh, I'm very passionate about um, encouraging girls to go into science and technology and engineering and math. And uh, so I look back at this event and, and what it's meant to me in my career, and I start thinking about the things that we're actually not teaching. At least some schools are probably teaching it, but I think in general we're not teaching things that are very important. Um, something that I think is really important for people to understand is um, that students shouldn't necessarily be taught that there's only one right answer. Um, we have them fill out multiple choice questions and we cheat a little bit when we say D, all of the above. Um, but the reality is we're asking them to give us one answer. Um, and, and we show this at NASA that um, you know, there's, there's often more than one right answer. And, and you can see this here um, within one decade we landed on Mars in three very, very different ways. Um, with Phoenix, we took um, a legged lander, and it's basically the size of a table, and it flies itself down and lands on legs and does explorations. Uh, with Spirit and Opportunity, we wrapped basically a coffee table-sized rover um, into a cocoon of airbags and landed them on the surface of Mars, let them roll around. Um, and then um, go out and explore, and Opportunity is still exploring today, uh, 10 years later, which is kind of fantastic. Um, and then with Curiosity, we created what I call the science fiction approach, um, which is strap a jetpack to the top of a Humvee and fly it down, and then when it's close, cut a rope and let the Humvee land on the wheels, fly the jetpack away, and crash it. 
Um, <laughs> and so, you know, from that, what do we learn? Well, we learned that audaciousness is, is uh, you know, sometimes a great approach. Um, and we also learned that, that there's, you know, very, very many ways that, that we can do this thing called landing on Mars. Um, and honestly, with curiosity, we tried to do, make it fit in one of the other options. And, and we tried to say, let's take a Humvee and put it on top of your dining room table and then land it down. Um, and we quickly realized that, you know, if a Humvee is on top of a table and we're trying to fly that down, that, that's kind of not very stable. Um, and uh, then once it's on the ground, we have to drive that Humvee off of that table. Um, and that's kind of hard to do. We could probably figure that out, um, but we found some real challenges there. Uh, so then we tried to wrap Curiosity um, in airbags, and we said, okay, we're going to take a Humvee and we're going to put a big cocoon of airbags around it. And what does that look like? And we started realizing that, that, that that's a pretty huge airbag, um, and it's got to tie to something, and then you've got to get rid of that airbag, and then it's got to drive off. And, you know, what happens if the airbags get caught in the wheels? Um, and oh, by the way, airbags, they don't, they don't land in a certain orientation, they roll. Um, and so now you've got a Humvee, and it could be upside down, and how do you flip that over? And so I was actually, um, in my internship, building these tubes of airbags to wrap around the Humvee and inflate and flip the car over. Um, and so, you know, what, what do I try to tell an, ed an audience of educators? Um, audaciousness and, and crazy solutions are awesome and, and <laughs> can really be the right answer. So we, we looked at those things and ended up with a jetpack that landed a Humvee on Mars, um, and it worked. Another thing, um, you know, we, we often see in movies and, and television shows these things that have to fit in, in 45 minute programming slots that are, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very trite that um, you are solving this problem and, and there's this eureka moment that happens and it makes for really good TV. But the real world is not like that. We started working on Curiosity in 2003 and I promise you she looked nothing like that. Um, it takes a lot of tries to get it right, and a lot of testing, and a lot of um, biting off small pieces of the problem, and, and answering little pieces at a time that organically get you to the final answer. But not often is it, you know, what you watch in a television show where Dr. House has walked in, and he's got his, his five pieces of data, and Eureka, he knows exactly what the problem is with the patient on the table. So I'm going to show you something that I've never shown anyone. Um, as an engineer and a designer, um, the, the evolution of our product is, is very um, personal and, and something that, you know, we, we like you to see the finished product. We don't like you to see how the sausage is being made. But I'm going to show you that today because it, it, it illustrates this point. Um, so I was the lead of the mobility hardware. Um, and in 2004, this is what the mobility system looked like. So you can see we've got some pretty crazy looking wheels there. Um, and we've got kind of the layout of this rocker bogey system. And we've got kind of a differential that goes straight across the top. Uh, definitely in the cartoon stages at this point, we're really playing with how big does this need to be? How much payload can this support? Um, just, you know, almost a year later, it almost looks like we backed up, right? Like the wheels look less fidelity, it looks even more blocky and cartoony. Um, and, and that's really true, we, we did. We kind of slowed the project down for a while and we really had to evaluate what it is we were trying to do with this mission. And sometimes that happens in, in problems that we're trying to solve, right? You just need to kind of step back for a while and, and maybe, the answer just comes to you. And, and so for us, this was, this was a really hard time where you know, you're trying to make forward progress and, and show that you're delivering on something, but you're not. Um, you're actually creating a stronger foundation by learning and by um, really making sure that you're going to design and build the right thing when you're ready to, to start that team and hit go. Um, now she's starting to look like a rover, huh? Uh, starting to get some tread on the wheel, starting to have some spokes, starting to see some real detail in the suspension. This is November 2005. Um, and you remember, we didn't land until 2012, so what did we do in the meantime, right? Like, that's seven years, 
Are we sitting on our hands and drinking coffee? Well, it gets even more fidelity here. Um, now you can start to see that, that there's some extra hardware being added. The differential's kind of standing off. There's this weird tape measure kind of looking thing on um, one of the suspension tubes there, and the wheels kind of look about the same. Um, and that's because as we start moving through the design and we start testing and we start answering questions, we find more questions. And we find that we have to answer and solve other problems. And, and so it's this, this journey and this organic process that happens um, in, in all of, uh, I think, real world life. Um, but you can start to see here, we're, we're testing her, um, and we test her a lot. We test her in the queen room. Uh, we drive her, we spin her around and make sure she's safe. And every time we start doing these tests, we learn more and more. Sometimes we're changing software, sometimes we're changing hardware, sometimes we're just thankful that it's working. Um, but you can start to see, we put it in a chamber, we get it really hot, we get it really cold, we spin it around on a centrifuge, we land it. Um, I told you that we land on the wheels and it's ready to go, and, and that's actually true, but it's still very painful to, to land it. Um, on rocks. We do a little dance in the clean room sometimes. She dances with us. Um, and that's me in a bunny suit, um, getting to see her move for the first time. And there are these really rewarding, special moments um, when you are so invested in solving problems and that you're passionate about solving. And how can we bring that into schools, right? And I think BIG is doing a great job of that, of creating problems, not even creating them, but helping students find their way to solving problems that they're really passionate about. And, and that's what being successful in any career is about. It's about finding the problems that you're passionate about solving. And if that takes a 10 years life cycle like Curiosity did, then that's okay because you enjoy it and love it every single day. Um, and so I think, you know, how, how, do we, how do we make students passionate about, about problems? That, that's you guys, you're the experts on that. But I can tell you that, that when you're passionate, the magic happens. Um, it's a very large and diverse team that, that is needed to create great things. Um, this is us at launch. You can see we have kids, we have families. Um, some are biologists, some are English majors, some are technicians with, with not even a GED, um, some are engineers, many are engineers. Um, and we all come together and it, it's that melding and, and melting pot of all of those different personalities and viewpoints that put their DNA into it that, that make it what it is. Um, and, and so with all problems, we need to be bringing together people from the whole diverse background because it's, it's through that and through all of those different people that, that we really get um, the solution that works right. And, uh, you know, that's a really special time when you've been working on this for eight or nine years and, and you see her go up and, and she launches and, and we all... At this point, we're all family, um, and, and your baby now is launched, and, and I have to tell you, I have two small children, and, and this launch, it's like postpartum depression. <laughs> she's gone, and you're like, well, what do I do now? I can't go visit her. It's like she's gone off to college or something, but she's really not going to come back. Um, <laughs> but then you get moments like this, and, and I remember um, as as we were designing the vehicle, it was a really hard time for us. Uh, and we were walking into a review and I looked at one of my coworkers and I said, you know, it's because we are designing things the way we want them to look that the first prints on Mars will look the way they do. And if anybody else had designed those wheels, they would have looked differently. But those prints on Mars are uniquely ours because it is our fingerprints. Um, that have designed them. And they say JPL and Morse code. And I think I can tell you that publicly now. Um, <laughs> I think that secret's out. Um, but it's, it, it's moments like this that, that are the payoff for diving in and solving those problems and, and working with this creative and diverse team 
and, and finding the solution that organically has worked for you that you've come to over many years and, and, uh, and trials and tribulations. Thank you.